I need to hit 100 Platinums by the end of the year, and if I fail, we'll have to delete my PlayStation account forever, losing all of my saves, memories, and of course, the 65 Platinum trophies I already own. And the first game kicking it all off is The Last of Us Part 1. Originally released back in 2013, this masterpiece really needs no introduction, and is widely considered one of the greatest games of all time. The original version had 50 trophies, requiring you to beat the game on the hardest difficulty twice, upgrade every weapon, and even grind multi player for hours but with 2022's remake that's all been toned down significantly no more difficulty trophies no multiplayer trophies with factions mode being gone sadly and we only have to upgrade a single weapon but for the sake of giving you all great content and at the expense of my personal mental health we're going to be playing the game on the hardest difficulty anyway in grounded mode supplies are almost non-existent listen mode is disabled and all enemies do triple the damage on top of all that i will not be upgrading joel with any supplements and will only only upgrade one weapon for the sake of the trophy that weapon being this crappy pistol which really doesn't help me at all anyway luckily for me i'm absolutely cracked at video games so i mean how hard can this actually be right oh my god <laughs> the story begins with us taking control of joel's daughter sarah who after receiving a frantic call from joel's brother tommy notices things are a little bit off what was that when joel finally does show up he has to off his own neighbor who along with most of the population has become infected with the cordyceps virus turning everyone into zombies from there we join tommy and try to make our way out of the city until getting slammed by another car resulting in us having to go the rest of the way on foot we then get separated from tommy and after making a run for it experience one of the saddest scenes in gaming history Shit. Sarah. move your hands babe i know baby i know Bro, this part always gets me. Especially as a father to a little girl right now, this hits even harder than when I played this as a teenager. Flash forward 20 years and we're now playing as Joel. Shortly after, we meet Tess, who just got screwed over by a guy named Robert for our stash of guns. We head out to find him and it's here the real game starts as we get the first of 54 optional conversations. Okay. We then start making our way to Robert, grabbing our things along the way, including the first two artifacts of the game. Continuing down the path a bit, we find our first Firefly Pendant. All right. First of many Firefly Pendants, which unlocks our first trophy of the game. Fallen Firefly. We then run into this poor guy who, look, normally I would put out of his misery, but this is grounded after all, and I need every bullet I can find, so... Sorry, bro. Yeah. Following this, we encounter our first group of infected, which honestly went pretty well. <laughs> oh, dude. That's really wrong. <laughs> oh my god, thank you, Tess. Maybe Grounded won't be so bad after all. On our way to Robert, we find a few more optional conversations, collectibles, and one of the most missable Firefly pendants in the game. Until running into our first group of enemies who quickly remind me what difficulty this game is on. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, there we go. But don't worry, if you're waiting to see me lose my sh in a fit of rage, it's coming. Oh, dude, what? Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Oh. Oh, okay, just shot through a wall. A few deaths later, we press on and finally make it to the docks where our buddy Robert is located. Now, normally this section is considered one of the hardest, but something came over me that I still can't explain as I basically became John Wick in this moment. Get in a better position. Have him start looking for me again. I'm around the corner, buddy. Oh, not you. Shit. Bro, I'm absolutely gaming right now. We then find Robert and chase him until he has nowhere left to run, only to find out that he sold our guns to the Fireflies and uh, Tess didn't like that. Luckily, we didn't have to look too hard as the Firefly Queen herself, Marlene, shows up with an offer we can't refuse. We follow Marlene and get to the next combat encounter, and after a few tries and many deaths... <laughs> Uh, you gotta be kidding me. Finally get it done. Uh, Let's go. But there's just one problem. I completely missed the optional conversation up here with Marlene because I took too long to get back. Oh, shit. 
strategy. So we'll have to grab that later in the video if we complete this grounded run. Continuing on with the story, we finally meet Ellie, who we're tasked with transporting to another location in order to get our guns back and then some. Once it gets dark, Joel, Tess, and Ellie make their escape until getting caught by a few Fedra soldiers, and it's here we learn the truth. Ellie is actually immune to the Cordyceps virus, and she's the key to finding a cure that can save mankind. After finally making it out of the Boston QZ, we head to where the Fireflies are located, grabbing more collectibles along the way and our very first shiv door for the Master of Unlocking trophy, which requires you to break open every shiv door in the game. We then reach one of my least favorite areas, the subway station, and I cannot tell you how long I was going at this for, but after many, many deaths, I finally got the hell out. Short time later, I found the first workbench of many for the trophy prepared for the worst and upgraded my pistol for the first time to chuck away at the combat ready trophy, which requires you to fully upgrade just one weapon instead of all weapons like the original game did. Moving on to the museum section of the game and we suddenly get separated from Tess and Ellie, meaning I had to get through this next area without getting noticed by any clickers, which was a struggle, but at least we got our next shiv door in the process. We then reunite with Tess who gives us that same look your high school girlfriend did when you walked in on her cheating on you. Oh, that's just me. After which I somehow cleared out this entire room filled with infected on my first try. Used up almost all my ammo, but that was freaking great. Before missing another two optional conversations with Tess and Ellie because I took too long looting again. That's two optional conversations missed already. We'll hopefully be back for those later in the video too. Moving on, we grab a few more collectibles as we make our way to the fireflies, only to learn that they've been completely wiped out and even worse, Tess is infected. She makes Joel promise to take Ellie to the fireflies out west and goes out like a true boss on her own terms. The next chapter in the story takes us to Bill's town to find, you guessed it, Bill, who, spoiler alert, is a complete asshole. Along the way, we'll grab even more collectibles, conversations, look at that another safe and two more shift doors making some nice progress towards platinum until we get caught in one of bill's traps and have to kill a swarm of infected upside down now i thought this part was going to be awful on grounded difficulty but surprisingly i got it done on the first try after surviving this bill saves the day and makes an absolute mess on my shirt in the process before leading us to a bar where we get an hilarious back and forth between him and ellie but even more importantly, our next trophy, self-help, for collecting the first training manual in the game. Next, we needed to find a car battery at the local school with help from Bill, grabbing even more collectibles along the way, another workbench, and our first toolbox needed for the trophy, sharpest tool in the shed. This toolbox also helps us get one step closer to fully upgrading our pistol. Once outside the school, I start knocking zombies out cold like I'm Chuck Norris, and hit a bow shot so incredible I felt like Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. Here Inside the school though was a different story as I basically became the bloater's bitch before unexpectedly killing him with way less ammo than I put into him in previous tries. We finally make it out of the school and into the next house where we find Bill's ex-boyfriend hanging from the ceiling, only to find out he was the one that snatched the car battery from the school in the first place. That's my battery. Before heading out, we grab another collectible and a few optional conversations, including a big one with Bill that gives us the trophy in memoriam, which you get for picking up the note from Frank that he just threw away. We finally leave the house and attempt to push start the car while obliterating infected in the process until finally getting it to run. We made it out of Bill's town only 46 deaths. I don't think that's too bad. I think we're having a good run. After saying goodbye to Bill, we're off to Pittsburgh, where after a long drive featuring Bill's nudie mag, we almost get caught in a trap. Luckily, Joel sees us coming and drives right through them in one of the most iconic scenes from the game. After a couple early deaths at the start, anybody else? Oh, oh, why did I say that? I once again channeled my inner John Wick and started taking out all the hunters in style. The other guy's gonna come around here, so let's watch that. Yep, there he is. Get fucking destroyed. Get wrecked. I got nothing for range. Come on down, boys. Come on down. But 
there's one problem. None of these guys dropped any ammo. I'm screwed. Until a few seconds later when I got extremely lucky. <gasps> Let's go! Following this, we get another optional conversation, some collectibles, and most importantly, our next toolbox, which will allow us to upgrade the pistol yet again. And we do just that at the next workbench. After this, we find our first comic, unlocking the trophy Savage Starlight, followed by some jokes from Ellie that will help us unlock the trophy, that's all I got, for quote, surviving all of her jokes. Come on, Naughty Dog, they're not that bad, right? What is the leading cause of divorce in long-term marriages? <sighs> A stalemate. Let's even understand what that means. Nope. Okay, maybe they're a little bad. Next up is the library, which was insanely tough. I started with the stealthy approach here, but like every stealth game I've ever played, that idea quickly got thrown out the window. But after many deaths, oh, oh my oh. god! And some lucky checkpoints, we finally got through it. And our reward for it all, some more bad jokes from Ellie. I used to be addicted to soap. But I'm clean now. What did the mermaid wear to her math class? What? An algae bra. <laughs> <laughs> We then move on to the hotel where we find some more collectibles in our next safe before taking on the insane amount of hunters that live here. And falling down an elevator shaft in what's easily the scariest part of the whole game. Now, I was dreading getting to this part my entire playthrough, but I had a plan and made it through the best way I know how. Run. After making it out, we found another workbench and almost lose Joel until Ellie comes to the rescue. A short time later, and we find ourselves back outside, with Joel now trusting Ellie enough to give her a rifle. Too bad I couldn't say the same thing, as this section was one of the worst for me on Grounded. Racking up the death count a few dozen times, taking me almost 30 minutes to complete, and getting absolutely zero help from Ellie. After finally getting it done, Joel gives Ellie a pistol for emergencies only, which in this world isn't everything in emergency. We're then introduced to this tank that's gonna haunt us for a while in this playthrough. We continue making our way through town, trying to avoid the tank at all costs, until we meet brothers Henry and Sam, who just so happen to also be looking for the fireflies. They decide to travel with us, and we continue our push to escape Pittsburgh. Along the way, we find more collectibles, a comic, another shiv door, and a new toy for Sam before his brother, who becomes the fun police all of a sudden, tells him to get rid of it. After finally making it to Sam and Henry's hideout, we devise a plan to sneak past the guards under the cover of night. Now, this next part took me quite a few tries, and that's because there's also a trophy here for turning off the spotlight called Lights Out, which makes this section on grounded difficulty a lot harder. But luckily for me, I found the perfect spot to kind of cheese this section a bit. And before you judge me, it was 3 in the morning and I was really tired, okay? Following that, we're once again hunted by that stupid tank that can't seem to leave us alone. And on top of that, Henry leaves us to die after falling from a ladder. Not cool, dude. Luckily, Ellie comes to the rescue like the true ride or die that she is. We then make a run for it, where after having nowhere left to turn, jump into the deep ocean water below. There's only one problem. Ellie can't swim. But to our surprise, we're saved by the same guy who literally just left us to die not too long ago. I'd say Joel would have been justified in taking him out here but maybe that's just me after which we head through the sewers where we discover the remnants of a group of survivors who used to call it home picking up even more collectibles and unlocking the trophy waterlogged which you get for literally riding this platform across the water with henry and sam yeah that's it we then find another toolbox which means we could finally max out our pistol for the weapon upgrade trophy as soon as we get to the next workbench continuing on we find more collectibles and our next training manual until suddenly getting split up where we have have to make our way through the sewers taking out an insane amount of infected in the process before finally reuniting with Henry and Ellie. After escaping the sewers and making our way through the suburbs, we find, you guessed it, more collectibles and have to suffer through more of Ellie's jokes again. If a dish towel could tell a joke, 
I think it would have a dry sense of humor. But more importantly, we find our next workbench where we finally max out the pistol, unlocking the trophy combat ready. There we go, combat ready, let's go. And as promised, no other weapons will be upgraded in this playthrough. I'm a man of my word. The next house over, Joel completely humiliates us with one of the worst dart throws I've ever seen. But on the bright side, we also find the final safe, unlocking the trophy, sticky fingers. All right, sticky fingers, we got it. Shortly after this, we get pinned down by a sniper and have to sneak down to the other side of the street in order to take him out. And believe me when I say this part on Grounded was no walk in the park, but after slowing it down a bit and being a little more patient, I finally made it to the end. After taking the sniper out and grabbing his rifle, I completely mowed down every enemy, including the idiot in that tank that's been chasing us for half the game at this point. But it doesn't stop there. Infected start coming out of nowhere, attacking the group. After taking a few out, we get overwhelmed and make a run for it, laying low at a nearby house afterwards, where Sam all of a sudden is acting a little bit off. I mean, he didn't even want the toy Ellie just stole for him. But it all makes sense when we find out he was actually bit. The next morning, Sam turns and jumps on Ellie until suddenly his own brother Henry kills him. Unable to live with what he just did, Henry turns the gun on himself and pulls the trigger. After the cut to black and picking up my jaw from the floor, the story continues as we search for Joel's brother, Tommy. But before we get there, we find our next shift door Let's go. and unlock yet another trophy. But this was the hardest one yet. In order to unlock the trophy left hanging, we had to do the absolute unthinkable. Leave Ellie hanging on a high five. Sorry, it was a sacrifice that had to be made, girl. We then reunite with Tommy, and as a brother myself, this scene still really hits home for me and pulls on some heartstrings. Let me look at you. You got fucking old. Easy. It's gonna happen to you, too. After a quick tour through Tommy's dam and catching up with our long lost brother, we unlock the trophy, who's a good boy, for petting Buckley the dog. Here's a nice good palate man. cleanser trophy after leaving Ellie hanging with that high boy. five. Thanks, naughty dog. Following this is a heated scene where Joel tries to convince Tommy to take Ellie off his hands and bring her to the Fireflies, but the argument gets quickly cut short after a group of hunters ambush the dam. After many tries and no help at all from like the five NPCs, including Tommy, that were supposed to be helping me, we clear out the dam. Tommy then changes his mind and decides he'll take Ellie to the Fireflies after all. But once Ellie catches wind of this plan, she runs away on horseback. We then track Ellie down at a nearby cabin and witness one of the most emotional scenes in the game. Game. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. You're right. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. Minutes later, the cabin is ambushed by hunters, who we were actually able to take out on the first try. The chapter then ends with Joel having to change a heart, opting to take Ellie himself after realizing he does in fact care for her. Now at the university, we're finally on the last leg of the game as we search for the lab within. On the way, we find more collectibles, a toolbox, a workbench, a shiv door, and our next trophy geared up, which you get for crafting one of every item. Geared up, let's go. About halfway through this level, Level, we end up down here. I like to call this place Hell on Earth. Full of clickers and a massive bloater, I died here more times than I'd like to admit, but finally got it done in an unexpected way. Oh, got him. He didn't die, did he? Oh, he died. Oh, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> See, just like the bloater I took out at Billstown, this one died quickly and out of nowhere too. I don't know what's up with my playthrough and bloaters dying in mysterious ways, but hey, I'll take it. We finally get to the lab and find out that shit hit the fan and the fireflies turned into monkeys. Well, maybe in all that research, they turned into fucking monkeys. I'm kidding. We actually learned they packed up and returned to their home base at St. Mary's Hospital in Salt Lake City. Armed with this information, we can now head on over and finish the story, right? Wrong. Joel and Ellie are ambushed yet again, resulting in Joel getting a pretty gnarly flesh wound. Just 
a flesh wound. Somehow Joel and Ellie make it out alive and we flash forward a bit to winter where we're now in control of Ellie and Joel is nowhere to be found. Instead we meet David who seems like a nice guy at first especially after working together against a massive horde of infected. Oh and by the way this part sucked. Oh you gotta be kidding me. Please tell me I got a checkpoint man. You gotta be shitty. Dude. As you gotta take on dozens of runners, a few clickers, but after almost a hundred tries, we finally get it done. Later, it turns out David was in fact a creep, but at least honored his promise to give Ellie medicine in exchange for that deer. She rushes back home, quickly using it on Joel before realizing that she had been followed by David's crew. She lures them away from the cabin before getting caught by David and locked in a cell with the promise of being chopped up into tiny little pieces. We then take control of Joel again, who finally wakes up and begins searching for Ellie and after a while run into two guys that Joel interrogates and brutally murders to get her location in what seems like a scene straight out of Pulp Fiction. From this point we switch back to Ellie who bites a chunk out of David and kills his boyfriend in order to escape. We then have to run through a snowstorm to find our way out but get trapped in a restaurant with David for a good old fashioned knife fight. After getting some stabby stabbies in we take control of Joel yet again. Now this whole chapter was not only light on collectibles and ammo but also supplies and for the first time in my playthrough i was not able to open a shiv door but again we'll hopefully come back to that later for our chapter select cleanup playing as ellie again we finally kill david and give him a sweet new haircut in the process joel and ellie finally reunite and we move on to the final chapter of the main game now in salt lake city we make our way to the hospital picking up more collectibles along the way including another workbench and locate the final toolbox for the trophy sharpest tool in the shed oh there we go sharpest tool in the shed another trophy down we then get to the tunnel here which for a lot of people's one of the hardest parts of the game and while i still died a lot i ended up finding a safe path to take here and went with a more stealthy approach after that we find the last workbench unlocking the trophy prepared for the worst there we go workbench trophy is done let's go finally at the end of the tunnel we get into a big uncharted like set piece where after ellie tries saving us nearly drowns before joel saves her only to get pistol whipped and captured by the fireflies afterwards we then wake up to marlene dropping a bombshell in order to get the cure ellie must die but of course for joel this is unacceptable especially after bonding with this little girl who just became like another daughter to him and the last thing joel wants is to lose another daughter so he takes matters into his own hands killing the guard escorting him and from here we take control now this part at the start was not easy the first room took me quite a few tries and ate up a lot of time but we got through it and kept pressing on grabbing more collectibles along the way but sadly it happened again we ran into another shift Door and did not have enough supplies to break it open so we'll have to come back for this one later too moving on to the final hallway before the surgery room i did not have enough firepower here at all so i did what any respectable person would do <laughs> i don't know how i just did that but I did, I don't care. After this, we finally make it to the surgery room where given the events of Last of Us Part Two, I had no remorse for what was about to happen. With the doctors out of the way, we grab Ellie and head for the elevator where we're then intercepted by Marlene who tries to talk Joel out of making this disastrous mistake. And you can probably guess how well that went. During this scene, Ellie wakes up in the car not knowing anything about the events that transpired. Joel then lies to Ellie saying there are a lot of people out there just like her who were immune and that they gave up on finding a cure we then reach the conclusion of the game where we find our last comic unlocking the trophy endure and survive minutes later we experience one of the most heart-wrenching endings ever an ending based on a complete lie swear to me that everything that you said about the fireflies is true i swear Finally, with the main story complete, we unlock the trophy no matter what and are now more than halfway towards the finish line to the coveted platinum trophy. Now, I gotta admit, the main game on Grounded, while tough, was not as hard as I thought it would be, even with the handicaps I set in place. Every time I died, it really felt like it was just a skill issue and completely my fault. But what I'm about to experience at the end of the Left Behind DLC is some of the most unfair bullshit I've ever experienced in a video game. Before we get to that, though, it was time to clean up some trophies through Chapter Select. I started with 
the optional conversations first, which was one with Marlene earlier in the game and another two back to back with Tess and Ellie at the museum. Next up was the ship doors. I had two left to get for that trophy. One in the snowstorm section is Joel and the other in St. Mary's Hospital towards the end of the game. After knocking those out, I unlocked the trophies, master of unlocking for breaking open every shiv door, something to fight for, for getting all the training manuals, and finally look for the light for finding all the firefly pendants. The next trophy we had to get was build them up, break them down, where you have to upgrade and then break one of every melee weapon. But there was one problem. I couldn't remember which weapons I had done this for already. The trophy tracker only told me that I had three out of five. But lucky for me, I found a pipe in the last shiv door room, upgraded that, smacked some NPCs around, and then had four out of five on my tracker, meaning I only had one weapon left and it was most likely the hatchet, as I only had that weapon once or twice in my entire playthrough. So finally, after grabbing a hatchet and slicing this guy's throat, I got it. With that last trophy secured, we're now just 10 away from platinum and it's time for our left behind grounded run, which I incorrectly assumed would be a piece of cake. There's no way this is harder than the base game on grounded, right? The story of left behind follows Ellie as she tries to find medicine for Joel at the same time having us play through flashbacks where we're introduced to her friend Riley which also serves as an origin story for Ellie and how she got infected. Throughout this playthrough we find the last few artifacts unlocking the trophy chronicles Let's go! along with the remaining optional conversations for the trophy getting to know you. And finally the last of Ellie's god awful jokes for the trophy that's all I got. Oh my god the hardest trophy in the game. Thank you. <laughs> you know what no let me take that back. Not high-fiving Ellie is probably the hardest thing I had to do in here. We also grabbed the last remaining miscellaneous trophies, including Nobody's Perfect for playing Jack X at the arcade, Angel Knives for beating Black Fang without getting hit, Brick Master for winning the brick throwing contest against Riley, and Skills for whooping Riley in a water gun fight. But my favorite trophy here was Live Bait, where we had to throw a brick towards a group of hunters in order to lure infected into attacking them. At this point, everything was going great. We were only two trophies away from Platinum and finishing this grounded playthrough of The Last of Us part one until this moment watch my back shit oh this is gonna be the worst i'm gonna be at this for like the next two hours like i can't even be stealthy if i wanted to because both of these guys are coming my direction and there's nowhere else for me to go like as soon as i peek out for any one of these guys look at this this is the starting location of this fucking section you got your whoa and as soon as I step out, I'm already caught. Okay, two down, but I'm hurt. I'm about to die now. Neither of these guys drop ammo. I got lucky there. That guy dropped a, a freaking arrow. This is probably the most I've raged in this entire game because it's just unfair. That's it. I got no ammo. I can't even kill this guy if I wanted to because he'll overpower me if I try meleeing him. Unless I can find another brick or bottle, I'm screwed. Yeah, you got it. Oh, thank God. We did it. Oh, fuck me. Come on. You gotta be kidding me, dude. And of course, another shitty spawn. I have one arrow. Three guys on me. It's funny because there's not even a trophy for doing this on ground. So this is just fucking hard just for the sake of people like me making content out of it. You're gonna pay for that. What is this? No, 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 no. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get high ground. This is like the most stressful fucking thing I've ever done. Oh my god, I fucking did it. Dude, that was all luck. That was all, a little bit of skill, but that was all luck, dude. After getting extremely lucky and finally finishing that section, the rest of Left Behind is an absolute breeze. We get the medicine to Joel, get bit by infected with Riley, and the story finally concludes, unlocking the last two trophies. Don't go for completing Left Behind and... Platinum, baby, let's go. Overall, this Platinum was insanely fun, and Grounded Difficulty, aside from Left Behind, wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. This also won't be the last time I play it. I mean, who knows? Maybe we can do a Grounded Permadeath run when we hit 100k subs. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to drop a like and comment down below which game you want to see me Platinum next.